good morning good afternoon or good evening whatever time it is when you hear this message i pray that you're poised to receive to accept and to respond to words of wisdom you know i remember many years ago when i was about maybe 11 12 13 somewhere around there my mother and i were having a conversation and you got to understand my mother was really uh bright uh, uh thinker and really sober-minded and uh we're having a conversation one day and she says to me well you know something son uh i've never been a man and so i can't advise you on the next phase of of life and where you're going it's something you're going to have to uh really figure out on your own and so like a lot of um, people of my generation, African-Americans of my generation, uh, I grew up in a single parent household. And my mother was the single parent, right? And I'm so thankful that I chose her as my mother because she was so wise and so brilliant and, and being able to just make that statement to me, but then also to follow it up and give me the latitude to uh, express my my personhood through my masculine uh, identity right i'm a human being and so as a human being i need that kind of autonomy to think and and decide for myself how am i going to manifest my my purpose and my destiny in life and i am uh at that point i was male right i was a boy but i was coming into manhood and so she had to give me that latitude to uh, discover and define for myself what being a man meant and how I was going to carry it out. And a lot of um, a lot of uh, people don't have that kind of support. And um, in particular, as I looked over my life and, and the different men that I've known and the men I've taught and, and coached and, and, and guided, I realized that not everyone had that kind of uh, support of, of the, the development and the mastery of their own masculinity. And this is particularly important when it comes to the expression of um, masculinity and dominance. As soon as you start to demonstrate dominance, dominant traits as a black man somebody is going to immediately leap in and try to throw water on that fire they're going to immediately look to uh, anything that they can they're going to reach for anything in reach to try to mitigate minimize diminish or just completely squelch that fire of dominance that is absolutely essential to masculine identity. You can have no masculinity without dominance. Their masculinity absolutely positively thrives upon and is realized through dominance. And this is something that every single man especially African-American man must not only accept, but cherish that you must express and demonstrate dominance in some way, some shape, some form. It is not negotiable. Now, the way that you express that dominance and the way you demonstrate that dominance must be characterized by this realization, which is something that a lot of us don't realize as well. Dominance is necessary for heroism. For you to be a hero, you got to be willing to, to be dominant. And every man lives to be a hero. That's, that's all you want to do is be a hero. Save the day. 
slay the dragon, baby. Get out there and slay the dragon. Slay the dragon. The more dragons you can slay, the happier you are, the more fulfilled you are as a man. Right? You want to slay the dragon. You have to slay the dragon. Right? Now, archetypally, the hero is always weak and susceptible. If you look at all the great stories of heroes, you're going to find that what what is what characterizes the hero? He, the hero is all, he's 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 afraid. The hero is always feeling inept. He's he's anxious and apprehensive about his ability to rise to the occasion. He doesn't really want to take up that sword. He's afraid to go out there and and um um let himself combust into flames and be consumed by raw uh, rage uh, and the inclination to ravage, destroy, and, you know, maim and all of those things, because those are terrifying. So the hero inherently and instinctively is terrified of, of that reality, but he feels it burning inside of him. He knows that it's just under the surface. And so he's terrified of it, especially the very first time it comes to the surface. That is what characterizes all heroes, right? But fortunately, the hero has a mentor. He has a guide, he has a counselor. And the counselor, the guide, the mentor, is always strong he's always stern he's always well grounded he's always focused and his focus is on that hero relative to what the hero is is about to accomplish or what has the the, the potential of what this hero is going to accomplish the the mentor knows that it's only the hero who can slay the dragon in other words and so the mentor maintains reposed and very well seated as he focuses on the hero and the dragon. And he, the, the, the mentor positions himself in such a way that he's always clear minded about guiding and coaching the hero and putting things in his place that will build his confidence, that will increase his skill, that will intensify his focus and keep him on track and being able to acquire all of the things that he needs to be able to do the thing that only he can do. This is what every black man requires in order to reach the full maturation of his dominant nature. You need a mentor, you need a guide, you need somebody who is adept, who understands that fire and welcomes that fire and is going to help you stoke that fire and bring that fire to the height, but it doesn't allow it to spill over. Because a, a pot that spills over only dirties itself, is what the elders will tell us. And so dominance in and of itself is a positive attribute, but the dominance must be tempered by wisdom. And, and so when you as a black man come into contact with that irresistible, unquenchable fire within yourself, don't turn to people who don't understand. Don't be trying to get advice from people who don't have that fire burning within them. Don't turn to people who are not natural born killers and ask them how to manage your inc inclination to be a natural born killer, because they're gonna try to tell you that you don't wanna do that, that that's bad, but it's not, it's necessary. And everybody who benefits from your killer instinct is going to celebrate the, the brilliance and the progress that comes from your unique willingness and ability to go out there and do what everyone else is going to run away from. OK, and so uh, I, you're going to notice in this message there, there are no there are no no disclaimers. Uh, there, there will be no. Uh, conciliation there will be no you know n nothing I'm, gonna, I'm not going to tell you to mitigate that fire at all at all I'm not I'm going to tell you to use that fire responsibly I'm going to tell you to find opportunities and venues where, where you're going to get the exact kind of coaching guidance and instruction 
on how to to bring that fire to the highest level amplify that fire to the highest level of heat and use it the way it is supposed to be used apply it in the way that it's supposed to be applied but do not under any circumstances accept the idea that you are not entitled to and required to dominate all right you you um you do not have to apologize for your dominant nature and you do not have to even explain your dominant nature you do have to master your dominant nature you do have to focus your dominant nature and you do have to demonstrate and express your dominant nature because if you don't it's going to express itself inadvertently this is how you lose control you try to repress it you try to deny it you try to ignore it and it becomes a a, 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 a volcano within your shadow consciousness and it erupts inadvertently and this is how you create problems for yourself and the people who you uh, cherish the most. So this is a message for the heroes. This is a message for the heroes, for all of those good brothers who got the fire in their belly and you are ready, willing and able to let that fire ignite in favor of creating positive change for yourself, the people and the causes that are most meaningful for you. If you're ready to put that fire uh, to work to help bring about the good condition, then I want you to find out how Oloye, Obafemi, Origunwa, and the Orisha Lifestyle Academy can help you take your practice, your nature, and your life to the highest level possible. Visit me at obafemio.com or orishalifestyle.com, and let's start working together to help you live the medicine that will heal your life and heal the lives of those who you are destined to serve. I look forward to working with you. Bye for now. Oh, double.